Hello and welcome to this video in which we will analyze the forces on the joints in this ladder. This ladder is a frame as opposed to a truss because each of the members has at least three uh, forces acting on it. And so we can't just use the method of analysis that we've uh, developed for trusses to uh, find the forces at the pins in the ladder. Um, we'll make the assumption that all of the members uh, composing the ladder are weightless and we'll look only at the uh, effect of this load on the ladder. We'll look at the forces that this 250 pound load generates on this ladder. So to begin, um, I've labeled each of the joints A, B, C, D, and E and uh, we will begin by uh, doing a free body diagram of the entire ladder that will give us the reaction forces at A and B and then we'll do the free body diagram of each of the vertical supports and that will give us um, the reaction forces at these pins. Uh, I won't go through and actually compute it but we have nine unknowns. Uh, we have basically the components of the forces at A uh, C, D, E will have two components for each of those forces plus one component for B because it's on roller skates. I don't think that's the technical term. And uh, there's no horizontal component here. So we'll need three free body diagrams uh, because each free body diagram can solve for three unknowns and uh, we have nine unknowns. So, so that's where we're headed. So let's begin with the free body diagram of the whole ladder itself. Um, and we'll start, well, I guess the very first thing we should do is define the reaction forces. So we have FAX, FAY, and this is FBY. So let's start with the sum of the forces in the x direction is equal to zero. And the only force in the x direction is FAX. And that tells us then that that's zero. So that one was easy. Okay, let's now look at the uh, sum of the moments about point A. And this will allow us to find, uh, since we already know um, well, since uh, we know the load and we know B, FAX and FAY are not going to uh, show up in the moments about A. So this will allow us to solve for FBY. So basically the first thing we need to do is figure out the distance between the line that the, that the load is acting on and point A. And so um, that will give us the moment arm for the force, or for the load. Uh, we know that the load is one foot away from the center line. It turns out that the distance from the center line to point A is going to be uh, 3.5 feet. That's the total length of this member, times sine 20 degrees. That's the angle that this member makes with the center line, minus one foot. And again, this is the moment arm that the 250 pound force is going to have as it acts around A. Uh, so let's see, it will be uh, negative because this uh, load will tend to cause a clockwise rotation around point A. Uh, so we need to add the 250 pounds. And then we have FBY going up. It's going to be positive because it's going to uh, tend to induce a counterclockwise rotation. And it's operating on a, of a, on a moment arm that's twice the distance from point A to the center line. So that'll be 2 times 3.5 feet sine 20 degrees. And this has to equal to zero. And from this we can solve for FBY. And when we do that we get that FBY 
is 20.58 pounds. Okay. Now, as I go through these computations, um, I'm writing down the value of FBY that I get uh, to only two significant figures past the decimal point. But as I do the computations, I'm actually doing them on a computer. Uh, and so the computations are done to the precision of the computer, which is significant. You know, it's out to about 10, uh, the tenth decimal point. So uh, sometimes your numbers may not exactly match mine. That's because I'm not actually rounding anything when I'm doing the computations. Um, okay, so we can also do then the sum of the forces in the y direction is equal to zero. And in the y direction, we have FAY plus FBY minus our 250, whoops, our 250 pound load, and that's equal to zero. And from this we can solve then for FAY, and that's equal to 229.42 pounds. Okay, so this is good. We're already, um, we've got the reaction forces. And now uh, we need to consider a free body diagram of one of the uh, supports, or I don't know what you would call this, one of the side pieces of the ladder, uh, to uh, find reaction forces at C, D, and E. So let's go ahead and draw ourselves a free body diagram of this support. And uh, we'll draw it probably badly. Okay, so we have uh, support. Oh, this isn't as bad as I expected. Okay, so we have this support, and um, we know one of the forces at the support is F A Y. This is at point A. The support also has point C and point E. Uh, let's uh, put in the forces at point C. We'll have a reaction force from the brace of FCX and FCY. And at the top, a reaction force with the other support, FEX and F E Y. So you can see that we actually have, we know what F A Y is. So um, this one is good. But we're going to have uh, four unknowns, and in a free body diagram in two dimensions, we can only get three equations. So it turns out that we're not going to know enough to uh, solve for these unknowns. We'll have to use a second free body diagram to solve for the unknowns or to get more equations, and then we'll solve all of those equations for the unknowns. So that's one of the differences between a truss and a frame, is that with a truss, uh, you typically, if you arrange your things, uh, your order of computation correctly, uh, you can solve for the uh, forces at the pins uh, pretty much uh, as you go. You don't end up with a whole system of equations that you then need to solve. Okay, so let's see. We'll say the sum of forces in the x direction is equal to zero. Uh, this gives us that uh, Fcx plus Fex is equal to zero. We can't use this right now to solve anything, so I'll just call this equation star one. Okay, we have the summation of the forces in the y direction is equal to zero. Uh, this tells us that uh, FAY, which we do know already, um, plus FCY plus FEY is equal to zero. We can't solve for anything there, so we'll just call this star two. And then uh, let's do the sum of the moments about C is equal to zero. I chose C because that will then um, get rid of uh, FCX and FCY won't show up in this equation because uh, they uh, point at C, so it will get rid of them. It'll give us something that relates FEX and FEY 
because again we know f a y. So let's see, the moment about c, we have um, f a y going up, uh, and so it's going to cause a clockwise rotation about c. So we have f a y, and its moment arm is uh, 2.5 times the sine of 22 degrees. That's because the distance from A to C is uh, 2.5 feet. I guess I better use my units here. And the angle that this guy makes with the uh, vertical is 22 degrees. And that's negative because it's inducing a, a clockwise rotation. And then we'll have plus um, one foot times sine 22 degrees. That's basically the um, the distance from point C to the line of action of F E Y, and this is positive because F E Y is inducing a counterclockwise rotation. So we have to put F E Y in here, and then minus F E X. Uh, basically this guy here, which is inducing a clockwise rotation, and its moment arm is one foot cosine 22 degrees, and this is equal to zero. So we'll call this equation star 3, because again, we can't solve this equation for, uh, uh, for any unknowns. So we still, we, we know f a y, so again, I'll put little check marks here to say that we know this, but we don't know the other four unknowns, and since we only have three equations, uh, that's, uh, we can't solve for them. So uh, it looks like I'm out of time. Uh, in part two of this video, we'll do the free body diagram of the other uh, side of the ladder, get the equations that we need to solve for all of the reaction forces and solve for them. So stay tuned.